Guts! Close that frosted window. Yes, Mr. Hilton. Not quite the place for literary endeavor. Uh, these noise abatement people have got a point, you know. Perhaps. As a refugee from the calm of the country, I find London rather stimulating. Uh, I don't suppose it's occurred to you, Rose, that uh, this passion for clamor is slowly but surely leading to a rupture of the drum head. I'm not off my fool. The ironies of life. Three years ago, you were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The word peace was, of course, applied differently. <laughs> I take your point. Judson! I wonder if you do. What? I take my point. The three books that earned you that prize were, I believe, among the most violent I've ever read. Uh, intentionally, Rose. Oh, quite. They were brilliantly done. All right. What precisely are you getting at? Just that it may have occurred to you that the one who calls for silence shouts to be heard. Lord Pearson, we'll see you now, sir. Ah. Good of you to come. Ah, uh, William. Uh, the sherry, Judson. <coughs> Sit down. Thank you. How's that boy of yours? Oh, very well, sir. Thank you. There you are, my lord. Thank you. <coughs> Clubs like riders are run by the Judsons. But created for its members. Yes, it's rather a truism, William. Yes. Sure. Charles. Do you care about Riders Club? Yes, I do. I mean, really care? Are you involved in its welfare? Well, I'll make a donation if that's what you're after. No. No, money's no problem. My family's connection with Riders goes back five generations. Successively, we've been elected as presidents. And successfully. I hope my son will be president too one day, if he's good enough. At least I want him to have the opportunity to prove himself. You see what I mean when I talk about involvement. Well, I'm a member of only 26 years standing, quite a new boy, perhaps. But I would not exchange my membership for a guarantee of immortality. <laughs> Your son is not in trouble. No. No. You're, you're going to find me very irritating. Hardly. I believe something about which I have no facts in support. I've never denigrated intuition. Well, then, I believe, sincerely, that someone is trying to destroy riders. How? You don't ask why. I will at a later stage, but how first? You've often said how much you deplored the method of election for the club. Yes, a selection committee of five, each supplied with a white marker and a black marker, a locked room, and a secret ritual. It hardly commends itself as adult behaviour. <laughs> it's always been done that way. One black marker in the count and your candidate is turned away. Uh, the candidates are selected with such care that it never arises. Voting is a mere formality. Yes, a gesture to that kind of moribund tradition that we could well do without. Uh, Mark, you will you? I respect most traditions. Mm. Uh, some more sherry? No, thank you. Charles, I'm going to tell you something, although it's a closely guarded club secret. In the 1850s, Julius Reuter was proposed as a member and rejected by the selection committee. Some idiot fringe thought he was a dangerous fanatic. The result was that many club members rebelled and Riders was nearly destroyed. I never knew that story. Of course, Reuter was elected in the end, and he was a big enough man to accept. The more reason I'm surprised that you persist with this dangerous method of voting. Charles, I'm more worried than I can tell you. History has repeated itself. An unfortunate habit. Uh, do you know Dun Cannon? The Field Marshal? No, not personally. Something to do with NATO, isn't he? Yes. Last night, the selection committee rejected him. Good God, Michael, look at this. It's outrageous. Scott, have you seen this? Damn it, they blackballed Dun Cannon. Oh, and somebody's stolen Nelson's column. I'm serious. What? Look. The trouble started. Uh, reading about Dun Cannon, are they? <laughs> it's a damned insult. You can't turn down a man like Dun Cannon. Can't you hold another selection meeting? After the box was opened the first time and the black marker appeared, 
The committee voted twice more. With the same result? Yes. And there are five on the committee? That's right. Who are they? I can't tell you that. Even if you did, I couldn't help you. Charles, I appeal No, Willie, you. I'm sorry. You have a jury of five good men and true. One of them has a good reason for barring Duncanon from membership. And I suggest to you that the reason is to destroy the club. The suggestions are not facts. But Duncanon... It's worse than accusing a man of cheating at cards, Charles. Far worse. He might even bring some sort of action against the club. It's conceivable. It's your duty to help us. Are you suggesting that I should investigate Duncanon's past life? No, no, of course not. Well, assume that I did and I uncovered some blemish. Would you stand by your selection committee? Even though one mistake would have to be matched against a brilliant and successful career. But you're being absurd. I'm putting a supposition to you. Ah. And what precisely does ah mean? That I respect your intuition, but you can't expect me to share it. I do not like suggestion and supposition. So you refuse to help? I don't want riders to appear sillier than this affair has already made it. You're oh, supposed no. to be the secretary, aren't you? Don't shout at Shout, me. shout. Did you put that impertinent notice up there? Give him a chance. What kind of a chance do they give Dan Cannon? Ruin him a thing like this. You don't think I like it, do you? I'll tell you what I think. I think if you had any principles at all, you'd resign on an issue like this. Who was on that selection committee? You know I can't tell you that. Now, will you excuse me? Take your hands off me. Not until you... might you... as well tell us, Moresby. Gentlemen. I was trying to... I know to... exactly what you're doing, Mr. Carslake. Causing a disturbance. Mr. Rose's resident? Uh, no, he isn't at the moment. I see. Yes, OK. The League of... Oh, yes. The 28th. Oh, I'll have to ring you about this one. Southfields 605, yes. Mrs. Um, Ventnor Jones. Uh, yes, I will. Thank you. There's been a number of calls. Yes. Nigel Chinnery rang twice. They want to advance the delivery date of your next book. Oh, do they? If that means you'll be taking on another secretary, then it can't be too soon. You sound a little petulant. I can't run everything here. That's very reasonable. But I doubt if we shall ever be able to find another Drusilla. Why should I bother? You seem to type well enough. That half a page has taken me over an hour. Your tailor rang. Ex-Superintendent Redfellow wants you to have lunch. Jimmy is back from Hong Kong, is he? Two inquiries about television rights on your book. They want to make a series. And the League of Sussex Libraries wants you to deliver a lecture on the 28th of next month. Very explicit, John. By the way, how is Mrs. March today? Where is she? That's another thing. We've lost our daily. Oh, I am sorry. I liked Mrs. March. Why? Her husband's very ill. She has to look after him. Oh, well, I must go and have a see her. Meanwhile, you better advertise for somebody else. I have. There's now Dun Cannon. Dun Cannon. It took ages to find Mrs. March. I know. Dun Cannon. Oh. This tells me no more than I knew already. Dun Cannon. The general. Field Marshal. The hero of Malaya. Correct, and probably our next chief of the Imperial General Staff. I thought the army had been disbanded. Not we pull out of the rest of the world, demobilize the men, but keep all the generals, I suppose. I hope we keep Dun Cannon at least. Why are you interested in him? I'm interested in anyone who has enemies. Has he? So it seems. Well, it must be important. It's been on your mind ever since you came in. Yes, and it is likely to remain so. Is that why you went to your club this morning? Your tailor was expecting you. Ah, I shall have to apologize to Mr. Bell about that. I've had a very frustrating morning, John. Ah, was somebody sitting in your private chair? Somehow I get the feeling that you do not approve of my club activities. I don't like what lies behind London clubs, no. White elephants, old-fashioned social distinctions, class superiorities. Very definite, John. But the clubs of London have always been the pulse of political and social life, the fifth estate. What does that mean? 
there are four estates that control a country. The church, the peers, the commons and the press. And I have always felt that the clubs of London have supplied the fifth estate, the fifth influence. Does that include the YMCA and the Bunny Club? I doubt it. One day the clubs may die a natural death, but the question is, should one stand by and let murder be done? I don't follow you. Don't worry, John. I told you I'd had a frustrating morning. I don't quite follow it all myself. Well, not yet, at any rate. Oh, good morning, my lord. Oh, good morning. Have you seen Mr. Moresby? He's not in his office. Oh, there you are, Gerald. Good morning, Shall Billy. Shall I bring you some coffee, gentlemen? Uh, yes, we may as well talk in here. Thank you, Judson. Thank you, Sit down, Gerald. Thank you. Things are dying down a little, eh? Only on the surface. Attendance has been thin this week. The bar bill's considerably down. Fortunately, Dan Cannon's in Turkey for the NATO conference. You've another election tonight, haven't you? Yes. George Wavertree. No way of postponing it, I suppose? Oh, no, I'm afraid not. You don't imagine it's going to happen again, do you? I don't know. I'm rather jittery. How well do you know Wavertree? Oh, hardly at all. I was wondering whether we oughtn't to tell him about what happened to Dan Cannon. Before he's been elected. Oh, in case he isn't. Then at least he'll know we've got a troublemaker and he won't take it personally. Oh, I don't know. Uh... I think it might be safer, Gerald. Very well. Thank you, Judson. Uh, cream or milk? Milk, please. That wasn't the only reason you wanted to see me, was it? No. I want to break a rule, Gerald. How badly? Oh, just between ourselves. Perhaps a little further than that, but that's all. Rule 22. Yes, I thought that would be it. A selection committee of five shall be drawn from the membership by the secretary. Their names shall remain secret during the term of their office. Yes. An amendment was added during the 1914-18 war. A selection committee of five, of which one shall be the secretary. That's right. I want you to give me the names of the other four. I see. I know it offends your principles to break the rules. Adirson has been president since the club began. I wouldn't do it for anyone but you, Willie. Where did you get this, John? I have a friend in one of the television companies. Indeed. They stockpile the lives of great men in case they pop off suddenly and they have to deliver an instant obituary. It sounds macabre to me, but I suppose there's a lot of sense to it. And you just borrowed this? Well, he wants to know about Dan Cannon. I've been through it with a magnifying glass. And he's led a blameless life. These people are very thorough. If they do come across any odd little episode or any blank patch that looks dangerous, they simply work their way around it somehow. But this life of Dan Cannon is complete. I'm indebted to you, John. I don't know why I did it either. I don't like the idea of London clubs. I know that. And I'm all the more grateful. Do you realize I've gone to all this trouble without knowing what all this is about? The field marshal has been rejected by Ryder's club. Why? Because somebody's trying to hurt him. So it seems. What else could it be? The president, Lord Dearson, believes that someone wants to destroy the club. Gerald, you're going in now? Yes. Hello, sir. Evening, Scott. Uh, did I alarm you this morning? Uh, no. Well, that was foolish of me. No, no, of course not. It's all going to go smoothly. Yes.
Goody. Had the most wonderful time. Out in San Francisco. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Evening. Tell me that out in San Francisco you had the most gorgeous. No. Gentlemen. To fairness and good judgment. To fairness and good judgment. Some of the members weren't too happy about our judgment and fairness last week. Neither am I. I'm sure you speak for all of us, Sir Donald. Not all. One of us back well done can and remember. I really didn't come tonight. Are you telling us, Hastings, or trying to tell us that it was not you who blackballed and killed? Don't answer, please. Gentlemen, I must remind you. His balance is secret. Absolutely secret. You do not reveal to other members your position as selectors. You do not indicate to those present how you vote. Could I suggest that we get on with it, Mosby? Uh, here, here. By all means. I register those present. Mm. It's Donald Bartlett, yep. Lawrence Hastings, John Heseltine, mm. Peter Richmond, yep. Gerald Mosby. Who's the candidate? George Wavertree. Proposed by Rear Admiral James Herriot, seconded by our President, Lord Dearson. A little potted biography, gentlemen. To help you with Wavertree, our candidate. Council school to office boy. Began his own direct repair service at 18 for housewives in North London. Good war record. Rising from the ranks to major and the commanders. Awarded the MC. Labour Member of Parliament for East Kensington, 1945 to 1950. A uh, good speaker too. <coughs> Developed his business interests. Construction, transport, engineering. Considerable fortune, noted philanthropist, and patron of the arts. Very good, Mosby, to the point as usual. Thank you. Are there any questions? No. Would each member present take one marker of each colour? Yes, we know the drill, Gerald. White in the right hand, black in the left. White is in favour. Please check your hands if you wish. All clear, hand. All right. Yes, I need you. Then vote, please, gentlemen. They voted again, of course. Twice. The result was the same. Mm. I know what you'll say. You do. The man who voted against Duncannon may not be the same as the one who voted against Wavertree. It's a possibility. But it's the alternative that one reaches for if all else fails. Charles, I can't hold the club together much longer. When tonight's rejection is announced, the, the members will resign en masse. Won't you help me? I've no facts, nothing new for you. Oh, but you have, Willie, decidedly. Last week, one man was rejected. With the voting procedure as it stands... Which you frequently criticise. Yes, because it lets in spite, envy, jealousy, corruption, and a dozen and one other weaknesses. Any one of these, or any combination of them, would account for Duncannon. But two such actions cut deeper. It could be two different men voting as they choose, yes. It might even be some unusual mental illness, but equally, Willie, your first intuition may very well be correct. That someone is trying to destroy the club? It is possible. Will you help me? Yes. I suppose you know he hasn't paid his subscription. You'll get nothing out of me, Rose. I don't give a damn about regulations, but uh, I doubt if Dearson had any right to tell you the names of the selection committee. You can surely see why. Well, I'm not telling you how I voted, and that's final. 
Let me put this to you. You can put anything you like. I'm not talking. Why do you want to cause trouble for riders' clubs? I don't. But you would. If you voted against two men so highly recommended, you can see that, can't you? Oh, right. perhaps. Now, there's that idiot Carslake at it again. Now, somebody would have done the club a favour by rejecting him. Excuse me. Don't try and get out of it! I'm not getting out of anything. You know damn well you deliberately blacked Weaverton. I know nothing of For the personal sort. motives, go on, uh, deny it. Don't turn your back on me. You've got a big voice and a small brain, my friend. Neither appeal to me. I'll tell you what I think I'm of you. I'm not interested. You'll listen to me. What precisely is happening here? All right, uh, don't jump to conclusions. I, uh, <laughs> I trip, that's all. Is that right? Karsnik is in a better position to answer that than I am. If I thought there'd been any oh, brawling here... Oh, forget it. I, I told you what happened. I don't blame somebody else because I've got clumsy feet. Well, you'd better have something on that lip. Come with me. There's a surgical box in Morsby's office. Just a moment. I'm not sorry, Rose. The swine deserve to be hit. You mentioned personal motive. I did. What did you mean? Ask yourself what would happen if everybody resigned from the club. No members, no club. That's what it would mean. Brilliant deductive reason. I haven't finished. I beg your pardon. No club, no membership fees. They'd have to sell the property. The light, I regret to say, has not yet dawned. If you're too stupid to see the connection, why should I bother? If you're too rude to explain, why should I? None the worse, I trust. <laughs> he isn't Henry Cooper. Luckily for you. Uh, moresby has got the accountants in his office, so I was put in here. Mm -hmm. Look, you won't say anything about that idiot Carslake, will you? You're the injured party. He could get chucked out. I wouldn't want that. I wonder how he knew that you were on the selection committee. Yes. Why pick on you and not Heseltine or one of the others? How do you know the names? Oh. You are about to answer your own question. And Dearson's asked you to look into the whole thing, has your he? Your guesswork is very well informed. <laughs> You're the only detective the club has. Ex-detective. You uh, wouldn't tell me how you voted, I imagine. I wouldn't. Or what Carslake meant by personal motive. I don't know what he was talking about. Sorry. It was under a pile of ledgers. Well, I'll leave you in good hands. Happy hunting. Hello, yes? Oh, he left before lunch, I see. No, but if he comes in again, would you ask him to ring Halifax? No, no, not the town. John Halifax. He'll know. Thank you. Bye-bye. I've done that, bitch. Hmm. Let's have a look. Hmm. That's all right. And I've done all the washing up, and I didn't break a thing. Good. Do I get the job? I'm sorry. I didn't know you were entertaining. I've been trying to get you all day. Oh, I told you I advertised a replacement for Mrs. March. This young lady applied for the job. Really? Mr. Halifax gave me a trial. Five shillings an hour. I've done three hours. Oh, and eight minutes. Fifteen and eight pence. This is Mr. Rose Anise Hurley. Where have you worked before? I worked as a sort of char in villas in the south of France. No references. Then we shall have to go by results. And, um... Appearances. Her work's all right. And the appearances are satisfactory. You've got the job. I can work four hours a day, five days a week. Is this discussion in your time or mine? Oh, that's all right. Then let us all have a glass of sherry. I'd rather have a scotch. But of course, uh, John. I heard. Your candour is refreshing. Well, it's no good choking down something one doesn't like. Why did you answer the advertisement? Uh, come and sit down here. I need the money. You spend too much on clothes, I expect. Oh, I don't know. That sweater is cashmere, isn't it? I didn't tell you. This is ex-inspector Rose. I suppose I am extravagant. I like nice things. Then I have high hopes of my collection of opaline. I suppose it's all right working for men. Alone with them, I mean. You won't sort of drug me or anything. Will we? I won't. Is that any sort of reassurance for you? Oh, yes. Don't think I was being rude. On the contrary. Well, it's always bed in the end, isn't it? Is that the sum total of human endeavour? 
I can assure you that you will be asked to make the beds, but not to lie on them. I like that. Well, I must be off. Ten o'clock tomorrow morning, then. Goodbye, Mr. Rhodes. Au revoir. That's all right. What a refreshing young woman. Tell you one thing. I'm going to mark the level of the whiskey decanter. Hello? I got the job. Though of course you didn't suspect anything. I told you not to worry about it. Uh, this man Carslake or whatever is your only lead so far? Yes. He suggested personal motive. Richmond, he's a nice enough fella, but Heseltine, well, he doesn't appeal to me at all. We rub each other up the wrong way, but that is purely personal. I honestly don't think he wants to harm the club. Moresby, he's the club secretary, isn't he? Yes, if the club closes, his job finishes. What about these two? Bartlett and Hastings. In and out of each other's pockets. And that's all you know about them? Yes. In and out of each other's pockets was a good phrase. They're both very heavy gamblers. Are they? I tried to get hold of you today to tell you. It may mean nothing. Or everything. If they've overreached themselves, or one of them has, he might be open to a bribe. Not much, is it? What about this Peter Richmond? You've got something, but you glossed over it by saying he was a nice fellow. He is? The right school and all that. That is the first unintelligent remark you've made this month. Look, it's one of these five men. You find some smoke about around one of them, and all you can say is he's a nice fellow. He's a suspect, of course. I'll work on him tomorrow. Good, and I'll look at our two gambling friends. Lord Dearson, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry to disturb you, but at least I'm keeping better hours Not this time. Not at all. Come on in. Would you like a drink? No, thank you. I just thought, as I passed here on my way home... You forget. What? I know you live in Windlesham. I wondered how you're progressing. Oh, I barely started. Oh, so this is how you do it. I see. Well, I've managed to get you a little more time, by the way. How? By calling an emergency meeting of the management committee a week from today. A week? Oh, it's the best I could do. Also, I've been able to fend off the threats of resignation. A week? Well, we shall have to see. But, Willie, you can help me in one way. Anything. I should like to have a look at the membership credit accounts. Of course, there has always been a certain amount of card playing in the club. Yes, and some members seem to have very heavy credit facilities. Bartlett, £200 a week, and he only has to settle his club debt every quarter. <laughs> That's right. That means he could lose £2,600 before being asked to meet his commitment. Oh, he'd be warned if the level was getting dangerous. Hastings here has £200 each week, too, if he wishes. Well, they're both fairly exceptional. Yes, but every gambler has a losing streak sometime. Well, is that what you're searching for? Any motive would be a help. Well, then I must tell you to forget about either of them. Why? Because they've both been winning very consistently for several months. Then who has been losing to them? Well, none of the rest of the selection committee, at any rate. No, you won't find a motive there, Charles. Oh. Good morning. I'm here to see Mr. Richmond. Do you have an appointment? It's a personal matter. I am from the Board of Trade. I really should have announced you from reception. Mr. Richmond has a meeting. I'm afraid I can't disturb him. Yes, well, I'm sorry, but this can't be delayed. 
Perhaps you tell him I'm here. Barker's the name. I can make this an official visit. Oh, well, can you tell me what it's about? That's up to Mr. Richmond himself. I'd better see him about it. Now he's asked for no calls. It's very difficult. He's with some buyers from overseas. Could you come back this afternoon? All right. I'll have to go and see. He's in the boardroom. Sorry, Mr. Richmond. Reception. I am very angry, John. How could you get yourself involved like that? I thought I could get away with it. Then you're a fool. I found out what you wanted to know, didn't yes, I? The method does not appeal to me. Look, it was just unfortunate, that's all. Another minute and I... You, of all people, should know that there are men with numbers instead of names who only wanted another minute. Yes, I realize. I shall have to go and see Richmond and explain. He could prefer charges. He's the man who's trying to smash this club of yours. I saw the papers. He's building a development site. He's right next door to the club. He wrote a letter months ago offering to acquire the club property. No. You don't look very photogenic, but at least you're antiseptic. What am I going to say to Richmond? You tell him it was me, and I'll have to stand the racket. Really, John, your naivety astonishes me sometimes. Don't you realize that I can be charged as an accessory? Go in now, Mr. Rose. Good evening. Good evening. All right? Yes, off you go, Millicent. Thank you. Do sit down. Sorry I'm late, darling. I described the man my secretary saw to her niece. I knew it was John Halifax. I didn't know you were going to do me out of my job, darling. I decided to exchange one deceit for one, uh, what would you call it, Rose? Breaking and entering? Why John searched your office? Unforgivable, of course. 
is at least explainable. It was my idea to work for you, Mr. Rose. I thought I might help people. I was angry about it. Why did you think it necessary to help? Because George Wavertree and I are, well, not exactly enemies, adversaries. Oh, be honest, darling, you don't like him. I'm sorry about your place. I enjoy cleaning up and things. And we enjoyed having you. I apologize for John's behavior. And I for Anise. I'm not sorry a bit. Mr. Rose has super scotch, Peter. If that's a hint, you know where everything is. Oh, it's awful when a girl has to ask, isn't it? Then I take it we're all square. In my view, very handsome. My spy did more damage and caused more offence than yours, but he did at least find out something. That I own the land in St. James that I'm having developed. Next to the club. Yes. And that you tried to buy the club property. Yes. And that lastly, you don't like Wavertree. You could say there was a prima facie case against you. Hold up membership at the club, cause dissension, weaken the club so much that it had to sell out. Except that I didn't vote against anybody. This is going to sound rather rude. But I only have your word for that. Then why should you just accept my word? You should, Mr. Rose. Peter doesn't tell lies. I admire loyalty, but you must confess to a certain amount of bias. Uh, Rose, uh, my bid for Riders Club, or rather my company's bid, came about while I was out of the country. It's a perfectly natural action to extend the possibilities of the adjoining site. As soon as I came back to London... We had a really I... wicked holiday together in Bermuda. Will you please be quiet? Well, you did rather spring Mr. Rose on me, darling. Anyway, I thought it was true confession night. I was sunburned all over. I mean, every uh, Listen, inch. Anise. So was Peter. Stop trying to shock him. Oh, I'm not shocked. Just envious. And you came back to London. Oh, thank you. Yes, I put a stop to the approach to riders. They turned my company down anyway, but money has a habit of persuasion. True. I have a record of the board meeting here. I'm quite prepared to show it to you. I should like to see it very much. No. Yeah. Thank you. Just a moment. These names at the top here. Yes. Directors. That's right. George Wavertree is one of your directors. Oh, didn't you know? I did not know. He's the one who tried to buy up riders on behalf of the company. Very interesting. As I say, I don't like him, but he is a director here. I wouldn't vote against him on the question of club membership. How did he react when he came back to London and found that you opposed him? He wasn't happy, of course. He's a misery, and apart from that, he's a dirty old man. He's always looking at my potential. It's a temptation I regret to say that we all enjoy. Yes, but he's got a mind like a cash register. I can hear the bell tinkle every time he looks at me. It's either beyond price or free. Well, I'm going to make my peace with John Halifax and tell him he's not going to go to prison. Can I do that? Please do. I hope uh, someone is going to take me out to dinner. Someone is. Will you tell John I'll be at the club? I'll call you at nine. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. So, Wavertree didn't mind too much. Oh, I don't say that. But I put a stop to buying up riders and the board supported me. They usually do. Have you often clashed with him? Sometimes. How far from the truth would it be to say that Wavertree would like to be chairman and managing director? He'd like to supplant me very much. Ah. Well, in that case, I think I'd like to do a little telephoning. Have you thought of something? I think we can fairly theorise that Wavertree had himself deliberately rejected from the club in order that he could attack it and you at the same time. One of the others deliberately voted against him on Wavertree's orders. Order, request, suggestion. But can you buy someone to do a thing like that? The man I'm thinking of can't be bought. You know who it is, then? I'm fairly certain. What I don't know is why. Are you telling me you've been poking about here like a cheap spy? It's no more than you did at Peter's office. That makes it all right, I suppose. Well, the others have forgotten about it. Why can't you? Because I know what goes on in this club land of your boyfriends, and I don't take people's word lightly. I'm sure you don't, but Peter happens to have told the truth. Come off it! He wants the land so he can push up another office block on a, a block of flats looking like a cream wafer, charging a thousand a square foot or something. Oh, don't be silly! I don't intend to be. Look, you don't think the club members are going to believe your boyfriend, do you? You just accuse people in clubs of sticking together. Oh, they do. But not this time. Mr. Rose. Mr. Rose gives a soft as butter when there's a pretty girl about. Of course, Richmond wants to make money. He must spend a packet on you. Cars, clothes, trips abroad. You're determined to make this as unpleasant as possible, aren't I'm you? I'm just asking you to be realistic. Women drive men on to success, make them ruthless. One look at you, and the club members will form a Peter Richmond lynch party. Mr. Rose won't tell anybody at the club about Peter and me, will he? I don't know. 
He mustn't. He really mustn't. What difference does it make to you? It makes all the difference. Oh. Hey, now, take it easy. What's the matter? My guardian mustn't find out, that's all. He just mustn't. Your guardian? Yes. He controls everything. He's terribly strict. Oh, Mr. Rose won't tell him, will he? Maybe not. Um, look, I was waving my arms about just now. Forget it. I sometimes do that. No, it's... I didn't mean to upset you. No, it's my fault. Peter and I, well, we've kept everything secret. Why these days? Because Peter's been divorced. My guardian is a fanatic about that sort of thing. What sort of thing? Single people marrying divorced people. And anyway, I have some money coming to me when I'm 25, provided I'm not married. Well, that's ridiculous. I know it is, but there's nothing I could do about it. You're not married, are you? If Peter wants to, and to hell with the money, but I've said no. Oh, my guardian could do all sorts of things. Send me away. I don't know. He'd be shattered if he found out. I know he would. Oh, please don't get upset. I love Peter. I really love him. Yes. Right from the first moment. I went to the club to pick up my guardian. And that's when I first met Peter. Who is your guardian? I thought you knew. Thank you, John. I suspected as much, but now you've confirmed it. No. Mr. Scott and I feel the matter can't wait, Lord Des. I've told you there is to be a committee of inquiry. Will that include Peter Richmond's part? They're putting forward strong circumstantial evidence against Richmond, Willie. Mr. Rose will want facts. The facts are that Richmond wants our property and he doesn't care who or what he destroys in the process. I should like to know, Mr. Carslake, how you found out Peter Richmond was one of the selectors. Confidential source. It's accurate. Scott here and I represent a body of the members. We want Richmond kicked out and we want it done at once. They're threatening to resign if we don't. Trial by rumour, is it? I'm not joking. Either he goes or we do. There are other clubs, you know. I'll give you my decision in half an hour. Perhaps you'd wait in there, if you don't mind. So long as you well, understand. Come along, boy. Half an hour is fair enough. Rose has a plan. Oh? He's in the committee room. Sorry, I had some trouble parking the car. Don't you miss? You know why you're here. You all know the trouble that the club finds itself in and that Lord Dearson has agreed for an emergency vote. I want you to examine your consciences and vote on George Wavertree's membership once again. Thank you. Dearson's quite right to agree to this. None of us want to see the end of riders, I'm sure of that. Uh, what happens if the result is the same this time? The idea is not to give Wavertree another chance, but to give the one who blackballed him another. Huh. May have been me, of course. I suppose I'm perfectly in order in saying that, eh? Gentlemen? Yes, yes. Do we need to vote secretly? Or why not simply have a show of hands? Oh, no, we must follow the rules. I agree. Then I suggest we dispense with formalities, gentlemen. Here, here. The candidate is George Wavertree. White is in favour. White in the right hand, black in the left. Check your hands if you wish. Then vote, please, gentlemen. <clears throat> How did you get in? You can't come in here. I asked Richmond to arrive late and leave the door open. You're breaking the rules. We know that. Gentlemen. And you must be have the remaining black. I don't understand. You all voted against him. I asked them to. If I hadn't, the vote would have been unanimous this time. 
five white for George Weavertree. I knew you changed your vote. You don't want the club to close, do you? So I asked the others to change theirs too. In that way, we could be certain. It doesn't prove anything. I'm afraid it does. I knew how each of these gentlemen was going to vote. The others may have voted against last time. No. You voted against Wavertree last time at his suggestion. No. I'm afraid so. Lord Derson asked you to go and see Wavertree and explain to him that there might be some trouble over the voting. You did go, didn't you? Yes. And I suggest it was then that he told you about your ward, Anise and Peter Richmond, and how Richmond could be removed from the club. No, what he didn't tell you was that he wanted to buy this land and redevelop it. You've corrupted my niece. I've done nothing of the kind. There's some half-baked trust fund that prevents her marrying before she's 25. That's the enticement to corruption, if that's what you want to call it. Do we have to be present, dear son? This seems highly private. Oh, stay, stay. What does that matter now? I listened to Wavertree, yes. He was blind and stupid, and I've regretted it ever since. But I did it. Excuse me, I have much of the word with history. I'll write you the letter you want in the morning. Just a minute. One mistake does not make a man a villain. As a matter of fact, your secretary has performed two acts for which the whole club should be very grateful. Two? Indeed. First, for whatever motive, he voted against Wavertree, a most unpleasant man by all accounts and one we could do very well without. And tonight, Moresby realised the trouble the club was in. He realised his mistake and he changed his vote, thus showing that his loyalty to the club was above his personal feeling for Richmond. It doesn't matter. I'll go after him. I'll persuade him. Tell him that the selection committee have voted unanimously to persuade him to stay on as secretary. Have we? Haven't you? <laughs> we have. I'll do anything to bring an action in the courts to set aside the terms of his war's inheritance. We'll surrender the money, too. Marry her first, Peter. And fight afterwards, I don't think Moresby can object to that. Well, I'll have a word with him. And Charles... Not a word. I suppose all that remains is to do another vote on Field Marshal Duncan. But it must come right this time. Why? Well, Moresby... What guarantee have we got that Moresby blackballed and cannon? I doubt it. Now, that is a different issue. I think we should delay the vote on Duncan. The President is calling an emergency meeting, and one of the propositions will be a change in the voting procedure. Splendid idea. Have another drink, Hastings. Come on. Yes, we'll have some yes. I'll join you, Sir Donald. Yes. You'll dine with us? That is the least you can do. Yes, you know, I think you're right. I don't think we can take the risk of Dan Cannon being rejected once again. No. Someone may have convictions above his loyalty to the club. Uh, perhaps. Someone who is firmly opposed to anything military, a man of deep inner conviction. Indeed, it might be someone as eminent as a Nobel <laughs> Peace Prize winner. I ain't right, Rose. But the voting is still a secret matter. Until it's changed. Oh, well, I've no doubt you'll succeed with your new proposition, but well, I'll not be here to see it. No. No. Club life bores me suddenly. I think I'll away and write a new book. An excellent idea. Why not start up a new crusade? But, Heseltine, this time, try not to hit below the belt. 